Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today it's back into Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our Let's Play against the devilish Mr. Lodrick, and we hover over the disaster. Some have called the tragedy of Bombay. Uh, there may have been an admiral or two relieved of duty uh, due to this one. Uh, and credit where credit is due, Lodrick uh, snuck up here, and he's done this a few times. He's played very aggressively. Uh, he's done some things I haven't seen before. Uh, and credit where credit is due, he completely caught us out here. Uh, you know, it was a recon failure. And if I click on the map, there we go. It was a recon failure because he either came through here, here, here. Somehow he got four big task forces through our recon net. And that, again, is a failing. Now, you don't have a lot of recon at the start of the game. Uh, you especially don't have a lot of recon, you know, when India are out in this area. That being said, we do have some, and you've got to take those Blenheim bombers. You can even take Hudson's. Of course, you wish you had Catalina's like you do uh, out in the uh, Pacific. But over here in the Indian Ocean, you've got to use those bombers and really look for, you know, use them for naval search. Now, the downside on that is the pilots do not come equipped to do that. I mean, you've got to train them up, but take some of those squadrons of bombers and we've got, you know, a bunch of them at Hyderabad, for instance, take those, stick them out here. Another thing I didn't do as soon as I should have is get a base force in here at North Mail and run f float planes here because we do have some float planes. Uh, they're not there now. Uh, here I am running level bombers that are doing, but you know, they've only got a five range and if their range is only going here, uh, that's not good enough. It's not good enough. Uh, Madras, I believe we have Catalina's. Yeah. So, I mean, we did have it quote unquote covered, but not covered the way you should. And really this should probably be at Colombo more centered on this area. You should get some float planes out here if you can find them. Uh, I think we do have some somewhere. I'm not going to spend the whole time. Now, see, I do have level bombers running out here. It, you know, it's not that I didn't have the idea or know that this was a possibility, uh, but yet uh, when something like this happens, uh, it, you didn't do it right. And so, you know, again, hat tip to Lodric there. We're going to have to now kind of play into how he's playing, which is he's play, being ultra aggressive. That can certainly, as the Japanese, you, you have to play aggressive. Now, ultra aggressive, sometimes you can get caught out. We're going to have to catch him out a little bit, uh, getting out over his skis. Now, I think it's more likely we do that down by Port Moresby or down in the South Pacific. Uh, and we may have to get our carriers out there involved and lay in wait, but we'll see. I don't want to give away the, the game plan, but we'll see what we do going forward. But this is just a massive victory for him. He sunk nearly the entire uh, British Indian Ocean fleet. Uh, it was the one carrier, the one battleship that we had on the map. A lots of lots of cruisers and light cruisers, and we'll look at all that. Let's look at the four task forces we can see. Now we've sighted four. You know we don't have much recon up here either, uh, but we've sighted four ships here, including one battleship. Okay, we've sighted. Uh, this is the main task force, and you can see he's keeping it five or six hexes off, which is what you should do. I mean, you should kind of have this. It doesn't have to be at the edge of their range, but you should have it ranged back so that if there are, you know, numerous aircraft here at Bombay, they have a harder time getting out to you as well, right? Uh, we have a lot of fighters that are four or five range. Uh, most of your bombers are going to be longer range than that, but... I had just moved fighters out of here, and essentially Bombay was uncovered. Just, just a bad mistake there, uh, and bad timing. I mean, they just they both meshed up to make a disaster. Okay, so he's got a two light carriers out here. He's got at least three regular carriers. No, I guess he's got at least four light carriers and three regular carriers. But we see ten total ships. My guess is he's got four, five, maybe even 
six carriers here. Uh, he's also got numerous destroyers and cruisers. Uh, we sighted nine ships here. We know that five of them are destroyers. One is a cruiser. Uh, and then he's got others. He's putting that closer to the shore just in case we try to run anything out here or if we have subs in the area, right? And so this is exactly if you're playing the Japanese or later on uh, when the allies go on the offensive, this is how you want to do it. You, you set your carriers off the coast quite a bit because they're going to have plenty of range, especially the Japanese aircraft early on. You have, uh, you know, your anti sub work in here also you know a cruiser or two maybe a light cruiser in here so if anything's coming out here to try to go attack the carriers you've at least got something here uh he's also down here got some uh other carrier support uh seven ships up here that he's just kind of set off from that a little out of the way because they're not um what's the best way to put it they're, they're kind of you know these are here for support right so you know, again, he's got a, at least a battleship group here, probably protecting against anything coming out of Goa in case we have something, you know, docked here that we get out. You know, let's say we had five battleships here and we just ran a suicide mission at these carriers or potentially we had another carrier or two down here. He's just defending against this. So this is really a perfect setup for him. All right, let's go look at the stats first of all, and then we'll get into the death and destruction uh, out on the field. Um, we ran 5,300 sorties. He ran 7,154. We took zero air-to-air -air losses. That's because we had no planes at Bombay. Never, ever, ever have carriers at a port where you don't have cap over the top. And you could probably point your finger at me and say, hey, buddy, uh, why are you telling me that? Uh, but never do that uh it was just again i was going to do it for one turn and everything just meshed horribly uh air to air losses so zero to zero they're destroyed on the field we did have some planes here on the field they were actually damaged because um i believe that i had moved some fighter bombers down here but they weren't uh, a full squadron yet i mean they were all damaged and anyway the point being is they were destroyed on the field i always hate those uh the japanese have had none because we haven't been doing any offensive bombing we did destroy 18 of his planes by flak well of course we did i mean he came in there it was like an uh, indian version it was a bollywood version of pearl harbor over here um you know, of course, flak was flying everywhere, so he was going to lose a few planes. We took 13 losses to operational. He took seven. I think some of these operational got damaged here anyway. Um, we've got a lot of political points. Time to buy something out and send it somewhere. Uh, there's no reason to have this many uh political points you want to be spending these down to you know two three hundred uh each turn but i've been saving up wanting to get a new regiment out so we'll get that i think it's the 160th i want to buy out because then that'll go together into the 40th division part of that 40th division we've already sent over to australia we'll send uh, the next bit of it now he's now kind of almost doubled us up in score 14,000 to 7,500 uh that's I wouldn't say this is normal. I don't think I've ever been this far behind, but it's not unreachable to come back, right? He's got to get to four to one to get a sudden victory. And that's, you know, in 1943. So, you know, this will continue to grow. We just can't let it get out of hand by doing stupid crap like this. Uh, Allied bases, 491. Japanese bases, 346. Allied aircraft points lost, 890 to 537. This is bad. Um, well, I say bad. It's poor. It's poor. Uh, we need to be doing better since he's flying all offensive missions, certainly. Allied Army points lost a 64-16. I always marvel over that number and what he's been able to do in China. Uh, he's only lost 120. We've now had 375 ships sunk. Uh, the game's showing us he's had six, but I, I think it's more than that. Let's look at what we lost this turn. And this is where you go, ouch, uh, man, that hurt. The Zerkhides, it is, sure, whatever. Seven Dutch, uh, this is a Dutch destroyer, worth seven points. Uh, that was at Bombay. Pew! 
We did have the one cargo ship out by Perth, just kind of a normal loss, normal uh, convoy loss there. You're going to lose some. Um, we did have, I went and checked, we did have escort with this, but they just got around the escort, and uh, you're going to lose one like this every once in a while. Bombay, we did have a cargo ship, the British cargo ship Wang Pu. Everybody Wang Pu tonight. Uh, five points there. The what is that? The Fingal. Five more points. Okay, uh, that's not you know the biggest deal in the world. We did lose a 12-point cargo ship. It was a Commonwealth ship uh, out here at Bombay as well. But then we get to the main event, right? And the Indomitable was sunk. 214 there. Oh, you know what? The destroyed on the field. Um, when you do have a ship that goes down that has planes on it and those planes go down with it, it shows as destroyed on the field. So that's what those were. Um, we only had 20. Let's go back and look at that really quick, quickly. Yeah, we had 20 destroyed on the field. So some of these got up and around. And as a matter of fact, some of them are in Bombay now, and we'll have to get them up and capped to the extent they're fighters, right? Um, but we'll go talk about all that in a minute. Uh, so the Indomitable... 214 points now i'm no mathematician but that's a lot uh when you're talking about a game where you know he's got 14,000, we've got 7500 214 points is a lot and then you can add in the 178 for the royal sovereign uh both of those taken by torpedoes boy I, I, I want to get off this screen the dene uh was also sunk which is a british light cruiser 23 points there that got hit by a 250 kilogram bomb i mean usually well it's only because it was a light cruiser a cruiser or a battleship many times won't i mean i say many times the vast majority of times will not get sunk by a 250 kilogram bomb usually it's going to take a 500 or a thousand pound bomb pound bomb but not this time and that's another 23 points so you're talking about like 425 points here essentially or around that area 420 points from just those three ships and that hurts uh the admiral chase we also lost another cargo ship that was five points all right well we have a lot to look at here and a lot to talk about about what you do when something like this happens well there's not a whole lot we can do now other than rush as many fighters to Bombay as we can and get them up in cap because we have to guard against the follow-up attacks. And he has gone nowhere, right? I mean, this is kind of, he's still right offshore, so he's almost certainly going to come back for another bite at the apple. And if we look now, these are all of the ships we still have at Bombay. Oh, okay. Many of these are wounded warriors. Uh, they have been hit. They were hurt, hit during the first raid. So we have two cruisers, the Dorsetshire, which is 40. Uh, it was hit by a torpedo. All right. And you can look at your damage screen here. Uh, you know, it's really, as far as sinking goes, it's about float damage. System damage generally just means you you know you go slower it slows down your speed it can mean that you can't move at all right if you have enough system damage uh like here we've got 99 system damage and 20 engine damage well engine damage is pretty easy to explain right that will slow you down so will system damage but float damage is all about you know are you going to go down uh underneath down to davy jones locker uh fire of course, if you have an active fire, you can't even repair a ship that's on fire, but it will start to add to the other damages. So these are the main three, and then the fire kind of tells you, are they going to continue, right? Um, also, if you try to sail them out, they can take damage uh, just getting them out to sea. Well, there's nowhere for us to go, and... There's a couple of different things you can do here. Now, you could just sit, leave them here at what you would call at anchor, right? Uh, they're sitting here in the port. Uh, we could put them together into task forces. Uh, and, uh, sure. Um, if there was a carrier still here, if you're in port, 
they only run 50% when it comes to cap missions. Always keep that in mind. Carriers, if you have aircraft that are coming off carriers and the carriers are in port, only 50% of their planes are actually up and active, okay? Uh, you know, 50% of 50% if you have it set at 50% cap. So just always something to keep in mind. But in this case, I'm of the mind, I like to put things back in the shipyard. Now, I haven't studied this in depth, but I just in the past, I've always gotten the sense that it's a little harder to hit at them in the shipyard. Is that true? I don't know. And I've never found it in the rule book. If somebody is watching this and knows, please put it in the comments. Maybe there is some kind of defensive bonus from the shipyard uh, as opposed to being, you know, here at anchor. Um, and there may be some kind of bonus about putting them in a task force. But what I generally like to do is take something like the Dorstrasure, I stand it down, and I put it in the... Sh ah, it's too big to go in the shipyard. Yep. If we look here, another bad thing about Bombay is it's got a very small shipyard. 8,000 capacity. Um, that's not big. Let's see if we, you know, put the emerald in here. There he goes. So the Emerald goes into the shipyard. Now you can usually overstack, but I think uh, what happened there when I go to the Cornwall, he can't go in. Yeah, when I go to the Cornwall, it's just too big. They're, they're not going to put that in the shipyard. And if we go to ships under repair, oh, it did put the Dorsetshire. What am I talking about? It did put the Dorsetshire back here. Okay. Okay, uh, I guess that there was just a delay in the game. So the Dorsetshire has gone back here. Now I put the Emerald back here, but I'd really like the other cruiser to go back here. So let's flip that back out pier side very quickly um, and see, let's go back to active ships. Let's see if we can get the Cornwall in. No, it's, it's not even giving us the option, right? And that's because there's firefighting going on. Now, remember I said, if there's a fire, you can't even repair it. Well, there you see, it's got one point of fire going on. So you can't put this in the shipyard, even if you wanted to. Uh, the dragon, it doesn't even give you the option. Uh, we'll put that in the shipyard. Cause here's the thing. You can overstack the shipyard. Uh, you don't, you know, you can put more in there. Now, it's going to slow down their ability uh, to repair things. Uh, but at this point, we're not even worried about that, right? We're going to try to get as much in here uh, because I always feel like it gives you some extra protection. So anyway, I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, but really, I would go from the highest point value ships down. Now, again, the Cornwall, there's just nothing you can do about it. Uh, it's got to sit out here. It's on fire. You can't put something on fire in the shipyard. You do want to transfer your planes off. So just transfer to base, go to Bombay. So anything that you have planes on, you want to get them on the airfield because you don't want them just sitting on this ship and going down with the ship. Uh, and I'm not just saying that phrase uh, flippantly. Uh, you don't want those to go down with the ship. So anyway, I will continue on. Look at this. I'm probably going to look at the rule book just to make sure that my instincts are correct. Uh, it's not something I've had to deal with a whole lot, like a situation like this. But I want to go see if that shipyard thing is true, if they get any kind of extra protection. I, again, I don't know. Maybe they get less. Uh, again, somebody tell me in the comments. Your other high-value ships out here, like these ASs are always high-value, 24 points. The destroyer's not so much, right? They're seven points. Like, you would think a destroyer would be worth more than a submarine tender, but they're not. You just have so many of them that those destroyers, maybe in some respects, you leave them out here as bait so that they're not, you know, the, the AI goes after the higher value ships, but if these are sitting out here at anchor, it's possible it would go after these first and you can take the AS, stick it back in the shipyard and see what happens. Oh my, so it's gonna be fun when we come back next time. Fun, I put in air quotes. Uh, to see what all happens here. Now, the other thing we have to do, as you can see, a lot of planes have transferred off. I, well, I hope it's a lot, but it's several planes have transferred off of their ships. They were up in the air. They didn't get damaged. This crew scrambled out, got off the ship before it 
it went down. So now we've got them here. And that, we don't need anything on training right now. That's for certain. We need these suckers. They're fighter bombers. Let's look at aircraft data. Uh, they're not very good maneuverability no matter what. Really, you should probably fly them at 10,000 feet. I'm going to put them up at 20,000 feet because he's got such an advantage anyway. I don't want him to get the altitude advantage as well. I'm going to put that on maximum range zero and go cap uh, 60. You know, they don't really have much fatigue, so I'm going to bump it up a little bit. The torpedo bombers... Mm, they've got a range of six. Now, remember, I was talking about how far he is off the coast. This shows you just, you know, Lodrick knows what the hell he's doing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, they're just in range. And so he must have some bombers or, or fighters that he wants a little closer. Otherwise, you know, stay about seven or eight back if you can, because there's a lot of allied aircraft that have, you know, a range like this. Now, we could bump it out to a 7. I don't know if we've talked much about this, but what's, well, maybe I did mention it before, but extended radius 7, normal radius 6. Okay, what does that mean? Well, we could pop it out to 7, right? It can go out 7 hexes. Uh, why wouldn't we always do that? And also, naval bombing, I always run either on 6,000 or 5,000 feet. Uh, this time I may run 5,000. Take off train. Let's go to naval attack. There we go. Either on naval attack or rest. That leaves it up. It's automatically when you're on naval attack, it's commander discretion. If the commander wants to go out there and get it uh, and go after it, it can. Uh, it, it does have torpedoes here at Bombay. Okay, 5,000 feet, maximum range 7. Well, let's. what if we did 6? You know, what's the difference? Why is there a normal radius and extended radius? Well, extended radius, you're pushing it to its limit, uh, so you may take more operational losses, okay? Also, it couldn't do multiple bombing runs right out at the extended rate. This is really like pushing its endurance to the end, but the biggest difference is here in aircraft data. Uh, default load. It normally carries one 18-inch Mark 12 torpedo, okay? Reduced load, 500-pound bomb. If you go to extended radius, it will always carry its reduced load. If you're within the normal radius, so six or less, it'll carry the default load. Well, we definitely want it to have torpedoes. And so, you know, if we did go out here to seven, it says using torpedoes, but it will automatically switch over to bombs. So just something to keep in mind there. So we're going to go to six. Uh, I'm going to put it on naval attack. Now, it is probably running into the the teeth of a hundred Japanese zeros, right? But at this point, if we could get in a lucky shot at a carrier, uh, if you know we just get that one in a hundred shot and take out a carrier or even a, a light carrier or an escort carrier, uh, I think it's worth it. It's six damn torpedo planes. Now we've only got four pilots left, so we do want to request a veteran and go here to naval torpedo. And let's see if we've got anybody. This guy's pretty good. He's got a 60 for naval torpedo and a 60 experience. I like this guy. We're going to bring him into the squadron. But see, it's going to take him five days to get here. So, I mean, it might not do any good, but we may as well fill this out. And let's do this guy too. 53 experience, 53 naval torpedo. They're also pretty decent naval bombers if they do have to switch over to bombs. So, yeah, these two are fine. Uh, the next guy down, not so good, but I think we needed three of them. So let's bring him in. So right now we've got four pilots, six planes. Okay. Um, once those three come in, we'll have seven pilots. I usually, in a, you know, if you have six planes, I'd probably want eight pilots. Uh, but we don't have that many good British pilots. Uh, torpedo bombers uh, yet as far as pilots go so I'm just going to bring in three even that third one I brought in is not great uh, but it's going to take them a few days to get here maybe too late anyway all right so we had the fighter bombers four of them up I really would like to get a couple more pilots in here but these are car carrier trained and capable we don't have many of those pilots uh, British pilots so you know we're probably not going to be able to get too many more um fighters sea hurricane twos okay so three of these now these were also on the carrier they're carrier trained and capable 
three. Now these, we can get some more pilots, or can we? Nope, we've got nobody in the reserve pool. The, these things are like, uh, these pilots are worth their weight in gold when it comes to the Brits, because the Brits just don't have any, you know, I mean, their carriers aren't very good. They don't have many carriers, blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, well, we may as well get up the, the three planes we've got with the two pilots so we'll go to escort there we're going to put that cap on 60 okay i've got them flying at 20,000 feet yep that makes sense because it doesn't the maneuverability doesn't drop off much we could even put them up at like 25,000 feet uh because that probably will have us over the zeros so let's go to 25,000 feet i'm going to keep this range zero so they're just over bombay um float planes it, we could probably transfer this out of here. This is not going to do us much good. Um, I'm not going to mess around much with this. Let's just take it to, I don't want it to go by rail. Let's just go down to Hyderabad with that for now. I think I think I'll put, I actually would want it out on the coast. Uh, but until these guys clear the area, probably not. Uh, same with this group. Uh, just get him out of here. I mean, there's no reason to just throw him away if he comes and bombs the airfield. So take him down to Hyderabad. Uh, then we'll put him out on the coast once he clears the area. Um, and we got more. Okay. Uh, oh, these guys must have just transferred in. Uh, oh, I see. These are the walruses I just transferred off of the uh, cruiser so the cruiser had a couple of float plane walruses uh, we transferred them onto the bombay airfield which you want to do you don't want it to go down with the ship you would if you're going to lose it at least just put it on the airfield maybe he doesn't bomb the airfield okay where the heck else do we have fighters do we have any up in karachi and can we get them there well we have two groups of fighter bombers um these just got to karachi too they just got dropped off well here you can see we've got 12 of them 12 pilot 12 ready aircraft 12 pilots how far down here can we get uh well let's look the extent the maximum range is 15. that's how far they can base hop and you can tell they just got here because i don't even have the training set yet but it's too late for training guys it's time to go let's put them on cap 60 and we'll take the training off uh we'll have them at their maximum range because i'm going to try to move them down here now 15 hexes how far can we go one two three four seven eight nine ten we could come to Ahmadabad, but i don't think that's going to do us any good this base does not have a base force surat uh, and so you would take a lot of operational losses if you're flying out of here. That being said, it may be worth it to get them over Bombay. Now the pro okay, now keep this in mind. If you do not have aviation support here and those any of those planes take damage, operational or otherwise, they will sit here damaged because there's no mechanics there to fix them. Okay? So the safer thing is gonna be to come to uh um, Ahmadabad, there we go, easy for me to say, this turn, and then hop them to Bombay next turn. Oh, we just don't have anything that close. These are Fulmers, they're independent, they are carrier capable, but not carrier trained yet. So let's go support. Another way we could do this, go range and see what's the furthest we can get out here. Endore. Yeah, we could get to that Surat I just talked about, but really it's on... Uh, gosh, why do I struggle with this one? Ahmadabad. Uh, uh, really, that's the base to go to. Uh, we could go to Hyderabad, I guess. No, I mean, that makes no sense. Actually, wrong. Hyderabad's right here. Ahmadabad is here. That's probably what I'll skip down to, but I'm going to leave that for now and study the problem in more detail. Uh, you know, so both of these have a uh, maximum range of 15, how far they can skip bases. Uh, I think we're just going to, I don't think they're going to get there in time. Let's see what else we have. So that's Bombay. Let's go to Madras. We have no fighters there. I took them all to Calcutta for gosh sakes. Um, 
just making sure I don't have any coaching. I'm looking for the air symbols, right? I'm seeing, can I find any? Hyderabad, these are all bombers. Oh, that's where I put those float planes, right? Okay. Madras, I can't believe I don't have any in Madras. Well, the two places I would have them are Colombo and Calcutta. But I don't think I have anything with the range to get there. This has only got an 8 range. If we turn on the drop tanks, it's got a 20. Uh, if we say transfer to base, how far up here could we get? Where are some of the interesting places we could go? We could go to Cochin. Um... Let's go to range. So I think I said, what was that? Hold on. 20. Okay, with the drop tanks on, it's 20. Don't forget to turn drop tanks off when you get to your destination. It really cuts down on their maneuverability if they get into air-to-air -air combat. Um, so they're great for hopping bases, the drop tanks are, or later on in the game for escorting big bombers on far away missions. But this early in the game where they're doing all air to air stuff mainly, um, make sure you turn the drop tanks off. <clears throat> we could get all the way up to Goa. It's only got eight support. That's 19 away. Warangal, V Town, Goa. Okay. What if I got to Goa here? Okay. That, and then they've got one, two, three, four five six all right let's go back to this that's their normal no it's not when i click off of drop tanks their range is only four and three but that's okay we can continue to use the drop tanks uh put 16 planes in at goa even though that's way over their aviation sport so you two things you may take more operational losses because they don't they're not as good at saving the planes if they get damaged or it's just going to take longer uh, to repair them. And so let's go up to Goa with those guys. I mean, it's too many planes to put on that base, but we're kind of in a situation. I don't think we have a choice. We'll put them up at 60 cap um, escort. I've got them at 25,000 feet. You can see why. We could even put those up at 30,000 feet. Look at that maneuverability on these Hurricane 2As. That's beautiful. I mean, we should always be up over the top of the Japanese for the most part. He always, almost always flies his missions at 21,000 feet with the zeros, which is smart. Uh, that puts him just above kind of most of our aircraft uh, is good where they're good at altitude. Uh, but yeah, all right, we're up at Goa with these guys now. And as you can see, the circle gets out and over Bombay. Now, those guys are probably going to get ripped up, but we got to just at this point try to save what we can when it comes to the ships. If we lose a few fighters, oh well. Now, this is the group I moved down here. They were in Bombay and probably would have done a bang up job. Let's turn on the drop tanks. And let's see, can we get them all the way to Bombay? I don't think. It's probably more than 20. It is. It would take two days to get up there. All right, what else do we have in that area where we can get planes? Uh, no places with really any base support. Pune does not have any aviation support. Ay, ay, ay. Um, hmm. We may have to fly some of these down to Surat and say, screw it, and then move a base force down there. Like this base force, It's a, I had it here because it has an assault strength of 9. This has a 54. Oh, this probably covers the garrison requirement. It's only 30. This does. So we can move this base force down to Surat here. It'll take a couple of days to get down there on the rail. But then when our planes return here, we may lose a few operationally, uh, but at least they'll repair faster or repair at all. I mean, if we have no aviation support, they'll never repair. Uh, but then one, two, three, four, five, that's five hexes away. If those fighter bombers are down there, um, 
yeah, that's their normal range. So they could fly cap out over Bombay. That would be 12, and then I've got five others here. So we could put 17 uh, fighter bombers over Bombay that will probably get ripped up, but maybe protect the ships there. And then we've got this crew of really good planes, Hurricane 2A Trops, uh, but they're at the, you know, we got, we're using drop tanks uh, to get there. That's another 14 planes. So we can put, a, you know, 30 plus planes out there. And then these guys, you know, I could decide to put them at Pune or something. Uh, I don't know. I'll decide that later. Let's go around the map very quickly because I'm actually, that took a long time. I'm running out of time. Let's see what else was going on here this turn we did lose that cargo ship out here again it's all about running escorts with these guys and if you see i drop the escort once they get far enough out here uh, when i say escort i mean the destroyers here we've got a destroyer the steward here we have got ak's yeah i mean these guys do not need to be sailing out here he's got submarine activity so we'll take this destroyer we will meet a task force We'll click on those uh, uh, cargo and we'll say merge, all right? So he's going to go over here and merge with these guys. Did I take the patrol zone off? Yeah, it should automatically go off. Why is it not showing him move over there? He maybe will just be waiting on them uh, as they come across his path. Let's also make sure his max react, let's turn that down to a three. Uh, so he doesn't just go chasing people. I also have this destroyer, the Vendetta. Eh, I mean, this is a pretty big task force. That's too many AKs. That was a mistake of mine. Uh, he got too far out here. We're lucky we didn't lose more in that task force because he does have subs in the area. Just always run him out with at least one destroyer. Um, okay, so we got that going on. He's got a lot of ships here uh, coming through the Macassar Strait into the Java Sea. He's coming over here to Semarang and landing. We've tried to bomb him a few times. It hasn't really worked very well. We're just holed up, right? We're just turtling up there. He will be getting down to Palembang eventually. He finally kicked us out of Sabang. Let's go look around China very quickly. Uh, we're isolated out here. This unit is. This is the big one. This is the big stack. I think we have, yeah, 3,160 in combat value here. We cannot allow that to get trapped behind his lines. I'm trying to get up on this road and get around him. Uh, even, you know, we've lost Cyan, but even, even so, that's... I mean, it's not okay. I want to take it back, but we've got to get these guys out of here. It's not about attacking. We need to get on this side of him, and then we can worry about coming back. We cannot lose these guys because they're isolated. I also have this uh, pretty decent-sized stack. I say pretty decent. What do we have? Uh... Assault strength, 642, not bad. And that's while they're on half rations, they actually would go up quite a bit. Once we get it, I'm trying to get them on this road. Now we're not gonna go all the way to Cyan because he's got a huge army here, uh, but we are gonna try to get him out here or up this way. We've gotta try to protect Lan Chao. I'm really gonna drop back there. If you look, this is worth 300 points to Japan. Um, and so I really want to get up here and protect Lan Chao. Um, yeah, getting this guy out is the most important thing. This, I, these isolated guys, look, I mean, it, it hurts to lose that. Uh, we have a couple that are disorganized now. It hurts to lose them, uh, but it's not nearly what we have in this group. And so we're going to just try to keep moving these guys around, let them live off the land, play the partisan game. Same with these guys down here in southeastern China that have just been bombed into craziness. Uh, these guys will have PTSD for the rest of their digital lives. Uh, these guys, getting them all back up here behind the river, right? Got to get them up here. But it's too bad Changsha is not behind the river. That would really make it an impenetrable fortress. But as is, it's on this side, and he'll be coming there eventually. Um those are the main things there. You can see he's just got task forces all up in this area. 
Uh, here, I'm trying to get cargo into Darwin. I'm also going to try to spring a trap on him up by Darwin because he keeps coming down and picking off some of these smaller task forces. See, I just have these little AKLs trying to get to Darwin. I have got a lot of cruisers, light cruisers here. I'm going to bring them around here, and the next time he does that, we're going to try to jump out here and, and you know, capture a, a thing or two out at sea. It's time to t start, you know, striking back. We're in the middle of February. It can't all be defense at this point. Uh, as we move around, I'm trying to think if there was anything too interesting here. We have got no supply here. Now, the group that got kicked out of Buna is headed back here to Port Moresby, but they have no supply, and he's got his carriers just sitting here. Is it? No, that's just an AK, but they're right out in this area. Uh, you can see I've where I position my subs. Everywhere where he may go through, I'm try or come up the coast. I'm trying to have a wolf pack of subs. There's two subs. There's two subs. Uh, that's one sub. That's three subs. And that's one sub. And I have more sub. Oh, I've got one up here too. My gosh, what coverage. Two subs up here. Now, they've all got Mark 14 torpedoes. So you tell me, are they going to do any good? But hopefully we'll pick something off there. That's how I like to have my subs set up there. This one's uh, also heading out. I say this one. It's two subs, two American subs heading up. And you can see where I'm going to place them in case he comes through here or south out of Rabal. Other than that, we'll go through the rest of the map. Uh, next time I really thought Bombay was the one to look at this time oh gosh guys that one that one hurt uh, it's again it's not a fatality it's not the game's not over by any stretch of the imagination we got a long ways to go it's going to be a back and forth tussle uh, Lodrick is really good and I do want to give him credit for that you know we I made a mistake there I tried to point him out I tried to be honest with you uh, but also you will not see many players do what he did there um, and do it so well and so hey uh, that's great that's why i wanted to play him on the channel uh, i try to bring only the you know some of the best players to play so that it's really interesting and hopefully it is uh anyway this has been strategy gaming dojo i'll talk to you next time when we come back uh we're going to go through the next combat resolution and uh, that'll be what february 17th and 18th and of course we'll be looking to see out of you know when i set all of this up how many fighters I can get up and over Bombay to try to fend off these secondary attacks that he's going to launch in there because we certainly have more point value ships that are uh, holed up in Bombay. So anyway, Strategy Gaming Dojo. Till next time, have a great one.